Unfortunate events are forcing me to rebuild the circuit. This time we will use more samples and use these buttons to trigger them. So we don't have an infinite loop of annoying sounds. That's the old state. Now we want to add some buttons and I will just use for convenience um, this A port over here so we have also a continuous uh, bit access to each button and we start placing them over here. Just we want um, a high signal when the button is pressed and a low signal when not. So I just connect the 22 to here and when we press the button um, these pins um, are shorted so we need an pull down resistor this is a high one I don't know exactly maybe 13 K resistor so this is a pull down resistor and then we will just pull it up when pressed just give it a bit more space here and the same with the other buttons as well So this is our circuit. We have four buttons. Whenever we press one it's uh, pulled up. Then we can connect a box here. Uh, yeah, this other box isn't available anymore. But um, I have a replacement over here. Okay, this is... Uh, Okay, uh, this box has six ohms, um, and we can zoom out a bit. Yeah, this is, uh, it's quite huge, but it will work. Uh, so we take this one, and we can connect. It this is plus minus it doesn't matter but anyways okay I forgot one resistor here for the last button okay this is the pull down also 10k here now we are finished so let's connect the Arduino but we have a slight problem as I discovered uh, we can't use the complete uh, memory that's on this chip using the regular um, Arduino bootloader programming serial capabilities since it just stacks when uploading uh, sketches, uh, sketches that are bigger than uh, 32 kilobytes and um, this way I, the only way that I found um, possible at least for me is to use my uh, Atmel programmer this is um, yeah AVR IS, ISP MK2 and we connect this this way now we need also the USB connection. So um, 
this connection is also for power supply right now and we will program using the AV, AVR um, ISP here. Let's uh, check what we have to change in our code to uh, use multiple samples and trigger them pressing a button. Okay, this is the final code. I've recorded making the changes earlier, but the final video was over 20 minutes long. There is no point to let you watch how I type stuff. So let me just explain the final changes here. Since we want to play four different waves, I wanted to keep them in the own files. You can just copy the header files into your sketch directory and when you reload the project, they will be listed up here. To be able to use the data definitions from the files, you have to include each file here. I have made few changes in the files, added the usual program mem to store it in the program memory and renamed each array differently. So I have data 1 up to data 4 now. To be able to use this definition here inside of this external file, I had to use the include for program space here. I have also deleted this definition of the length of this data array. We can use size off there. So I have all waveforms here in different files now. Let's get back to the code. There are some problem using more than 64 kilobytes since the AVR GCC compiler just supports 16-bit pointers. But this macro solves this problem with some inline assembler and generates from uh, yeah, a definition, a 32 bits pointer. So we are just using this uh, macro here to get the addresses of our waveforms here and store the pointers in this wave array here, which is defined over here. To access also the sizes conveniently, I just stored the wavelength inside of this array over here. Finally, we have also the position when playing um, each of these waves. So we have an array of positions and uh, they are predefined as minus one, which I will take as uh, it's not playing at the current moment. When setting it to zero, it will start play until the size of uh, the waveform is reached. So as you can see, I have extended the setup a bit more. So we get the 32 bits pointers over here. Then the output for our 8 bit samples haven't changed there and we need some input which is at port A. I just take every bit of this port A for input here. Calculating the sample and setting it uh, in the loop here using the microseconds delay wasn't very precise. You can't use this when you want to mix up to four samples, since you have also to count in the delay that you have from calculating the samples. So using a fixed delay, we just play the samples in different speeds whenever it takes a bit longer or less long. I have decided to use the real timer here. The timer allows to trigger a function after a specific count of cycles from the processor. So this is very precise now. Let me explain how it is initialized. It's not that difficult. First of all, I set this TCCRB register for the fifth timer. So I just set two flags for this register. This first flag indicates that I want to use the timer in the CTC mode. This means that the timer counts up a value and whenever it's matching, a value that I gave it here, it will just clear the timer again to zero and start from the beginning. The second flag indicates that I don't want to have any prescaling. So the counter of the timer is incremented each cycle of the CPU, which is 16 million times per second for the 16 MHz processor. I have used 32 kHz for the samples this time. So we want to set our compare value of the timer to the cycle count after each a single sample has to be calculated. This is 500 cycles in this case. 500 CPU cycles is really enough to do what we want to do. We also set the timer interrupt register for the timer 5 to trigger the interrupt whenever the value matches the counter. And this is the interrupt function that's called every 500 cycles of the CPU. It's timer 5 on compare with the register A, which is OCR5A here. This code is looking a bit more difficult than our older loop here. And the reason is because we want to mix up to four samples. You can press all the buttons at once and you want to hear all the samples at the same time. So we have to add all the samples. The samples are stored as 8-bit between 0 and 255. The 8-bit samples are biased to be around 128. So when we want to add them, we have to shift them back to zero. And that's what's happening over here. So we want to mix for all four samples over here, which this loops does. Inside the loop, 
we are checking if the current wave is playing. So we check the pointer if it's bigger or equal to zero. If it is, it means that we are playing this waveform. So we add to the sample the sample that we get from this waveform at the current position. Important difference in this code is that we are using this read byte far function. The far function takes a 32 bits pointer to the samples. This is the way that we create this pointer. It's the start of the current waveform and we just add the position to this pointer and we increment the position as well afterwards, like we did also before. When we get this 8-bit value at this position, we shift this to 0, so we have a signed value between minus 128 and plus 127. After we added the sample, we just compare the position to the length of the wave and just deactivate the playing when we reach the end using minus 1. If the position is set to minus 1, this condition doesn't match, so we end in this else case here. And what we want to do in this else case is to check if a button is pressed. We have connected the buttons to the bits 0 up to 3 of this pin A. So we have just to filter with the mask over here and check if it's not 0. If it's not 0, the button is pressed for the current waveform. And then we have just to set the position to 0 to let's start it playing until it's finished. Since we are adding to the sample, up to four different samples, we end up with values that are out of range of the 8-bit that we need at the end. So I just use a hard clip. If the sample value is shorter than minus 128, we just clip it to it, as well if it's bigger than 127. And then we have just to shift back to the positive range as before and cast it to a character, which is 8-bit here. That's enough and we can just write it to our resistor letter here. The loop is now free to do other stuff. It just interrupted whenever we have to play a sample. Now that we are finished, we have just to write this new code using our AVI ISP. So I just set the new programmer here, which is AVR ISP MK2. And to use this external programmer, we have just to use this button as well, but we have to press Shift to upload using programmer, as you can see. So let's do this and see the result. We can disconnect the programmer now, but we can also leave it, it uh, doesn't really matter. And now we can just uh, try pressing a button here. And we can uh, check the mixing, so we press two at once. When we keep pressed, it's just repeating. You can change this as well. We have some noise there. I'm not sure where, it, where it's coming from, but I'm really satisfied with the bass. And uh, the amplifier is quite warm, I would say. It's about 37 degrees. But. Uh, uh, it's working quite nice. 100 kilobytes used for samples and uh, let's see what we can do next time. If you enjoyed this video just subscribe and tune in again.